Welcome guys to Doctor of the Month. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Mike, a GP working in Manchester, UK. And every month we'll be interviewing a doctor. Three questions, five minutes, let's get started. So Kieran Morjaria is a doctor, YouTuber, and also a comedian based in Manchester, UK. Tell me about your most popular video that you have on YouTube at the moment. So my most popular video is actually um, how much money I make as a doctor. And then I did a couple of piggyback videos on the back of that about the finances of doctors, about the highest earning doctors in the UK, about uh, something else to do with the finances. And they also did really well because of that first video. It, it didn't do anything for about five or six months. It kind of sat and grumbled along with my average old video. And then all of a sudden shot up and the graph on YouTube, in the back end of YouTube, you get a graph of the analytics where you can see the views over time. And it's like flat, 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 spike up. And like when people talk about a viral video, that was like the viral moment for me. And the, the other thing about that video is that it wasn't really anything new. It wasn't like I'd done something super original that no one else was doing. I had been doing that stuff and it was doing okay. But that video was actually a video that I'd seen a couple of people do before. And I thought, you know, that's interesting. People are interested in how much money doctors are earning. I'm going to make a similar video. The only thing I did different really was put a couple of jokes in there at the start, kind of sped it up a little bit. And somehow that worked for me. Why do you think that video is so popular? Why did it finally kind of pick off uh, the way you've described it? I think for two reasons. There's two people who are interested in that video. There's the general public who don't know how much doctors earn and they are interested in that video to understand that. And I break down that pay slip a lot. And a lot of the people watching are actually doctors who say, I thought that FY1 new doctors were getting paid 25,000 pounds because that's what it says. But actually when I got my first pay slip, I was earning closer to 40. And so there's a huge disparity there. And a lot of the stuff was people saying, I didn't know that we got paid this much. We do, it's just, it's really confusing the way they do it. I don't know why they do it this way. I don't know if they're trying to make it harder for people to find it, to hide things. But I think because it was so open and clear, people were interested in it. Brilliant. And now I wanted to ask you one final question about this. So I noticed living in the UK, I'm not from the UK originally, I'm from yeah. Canada. People really don't like talking about money. <laughs> is that something that you've encountered or is that part of the culture? Why don't Brits like talking about money? Or yeah. is that not right? I, yeah, I, I'm, yeah, you're absolutely right. People almost feel as if you shouldn't talk about it, like it's a taboo thing to talk about. And I don't understand it. Even on that video, I've got loads of comments saying, you, you know, you, lots of positive things, but also some negative things saying you shouldn't be talking about this. But but why? That's my answer to that is if people are sharing what they are earning and how their pair is broken down, someone may have watched that and thought, actually, my, my pay slip is wrong. I should be, be being paid more. I'm at the same level and I'm being paid less or there's things I can do to earn more. Uh, right. Brilliant. Um, I really like that video. So um, obviously, if anyone hasn't watched that video, I would highly recommend it because it is really entertaining at the same time as being super informative. Tell me something that you're passionate about at the moment. I can see that you're a passionate guy anyways, <laughs> but is there one particular thing that you're really into at the moment? I'm really into storytelling and filmmaking and it's something that I really want to get better at and so over the past sort of six months or so I've decided to invest in it a lot more. I invested in the kit, I bought um, this camera, I bought a professional microphone, I've got all the professional editing software, I've been on courses. I'm on a course now that Casey Neistat's doing about storytelling and filmmaking and so I just think it's such a nice skill to be able to have both for the business side of things, to be able to make something that people are going to watch on YouTube, people are going to enjoy that's going to perform well, but also as like a personal thing as well, to be able to turn like your own pictures, videos, memories into a story and turn that into a video and have it like immortalized forever. I, I love looking back at my YouTube channel anyway and looking at when I've told a story about what I'm doing in my life, imagine 30, 40 years down the line, looking back at the stories now and thinking, you know, that's what I was doing at the time. It's such a nice digital photo book to have. So that's what I'm really into. Over the last 12 months, 12 months is a long time. A lot has happened over the last 12 months, essentially. But there might have been some books or some movies or a Netflix series that has really kind of I got to you somehow, you've loved it, or it's kind of changed you, moved you. So I read a few books. I went on this like wild journey of self-development where I read, read loads of these books that these self-development people were talking about. Uh, and the two that come to mind definitely are one is the four hour work week, but everyone talks about the four hour work week. So the other one that 
I read and I just couldn't stop talking about it to people was this book by Chris Voss called Never Split the Difference. I don't know if you've heard about it before. So basically this guy, Chris Voss, was a FBI negotiator and he uh, worked his whole career in the FBI. He was like a lead negotiator. And then when he retired, he then wrote this book about tactics they use for negotiation in the FBI. And so the whole book is about how you can practically use things to get people to understand your point of view. So it's almost like how to win an argument, basically, but doing it in such a way that it doesn't feel like you're arguing with someone because as soon as you enter an argument, both of you have lost. It's just full of little language techniques you can use to help improve your communication with people. Thanks so much for joining us today. Now here's the monthly Doctor of the Month competition. The first person who shares this link on their social media sites will get a free t-shirt. So start sharing and then send me a screenshot. And the t-shirt is yours. Good luck.